Hey hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue and I'm bringing you all this playthrough of me playing Renegade, or me playing a board game I should say. Uh, this is going to be a playthrough of Renegade, and uh, this will be kind of following up the whole review or just overview or commentary video that I did on the game. <clears throat> um, in this playthrough I'm playing as Ocean Noro, I'm playing as a red player, so my starting position will be there, or my, my home server as the game uses. Uh, if, you, if you checked out the video where I did my commentary, you know that one of the things that's I, I concede, but I also kind of dis like like I I'm okay with it, but also agree that the accessibility of this game is a little bit problematic because all these fancy words for what reason? Anyway, so all is that all is done. We're gonna start with my spawning point being there, and we're gonna have this particular uh, enemy that we're gonna be fighting, this SMC or challenge card or I guess rules. And for this one, this one's called Spider. And this one is a little bit annoying, but we'll kind of deal with it uh, because that's what we're going to do in this game. So, uh, oh, also, sorry, uh, the the game comes with these little standees for each person, which is supposed to stand up on like little plastic stands. Uh, they don't show up very well, in my opinion, on the camera. I mean, I guess they do show up well enough. We're not moving at the speed of light or anything. So I'm just going to use this meeple because it seems cool. And also, set up my little, my little setup there, layout. But uh, as far as the setup, starting boss's ability, uh, for this one, I'm going to start with the top section that's going to be the setup. And the setup says uh, place one spark. So place one of these black, one of these black little uh, circles here. Place one spark on each partition. Uh, a partition is uh, a little space here. Once again, going with the big words. So place one, one black circle in each of the spaces on faith, which is the purple one. And um, also place one uh, black circle, one spark on every odd number partition of each player's home server. So there's only one player, which is me, and I will be putting uh, one on each odd space on my space. So I'm gonna do that now. So I put one there, one there, and then I put one here. And then I also put one on every space on Faith over here. There we go. And Faith is, for those who don't know, uh, the purple one is the place where all the bad things usually happen. That's, that's kind of like the, I guess there's like a theme in this game that, Sure, it exists. There's lore or something, but sure. And then uh, the secondary part down there is something that I do during my whatever it tells me to do it. Uh, so for this one, uh, it says uh, remove all partition die. Uh, spider places places each spark on a server's lowest number partition uh, with the fewest sparks, uh, which is either you know if you have a square, which is a guardian, equals three sparks. At any time. Uh, during each end of turn step, delete all of the uh, things that I put in there. So all the uh, circles or squares, so all the um, containments or contaminants, or and insulations. Those are things that I can put. Those are things that are good for me. In any partition in which every adjacent partition has either a black circle or a black square, uh, each countermeasure phase skip the move spark step. And actually, now I'm thinking about it. Um, I was playing this wrong earlier, but uh, yeah, it says you put one of the black dots on each server's lowest number. Sorry, it says on a server's lowest number partition with the fewest sparks. I see, I see. So, so that's not nearly as, ag as aggressive as I was playing it previously, but uh, it's going to slowly start filling in the areas. So if I'm interpreting that correctly, which, you know, feel free to comment if, you know, I played it wrong or whatnot. And I'll, I'll try to keep the closed captions for, I guess, Klingons, what people use nowadays. Um, to kind of put rules corrections if I make any mistakes, so feel free to have those on. Try to mention at the top of the video. But in this particular situation, uh, what that means, if I'm interpreting that correctly, is that I will put it on a partition with the lowest one, and then again, um, I will do it again. So I'll put it on the partition with the lowest one, and then again, uh, at the end of the next turn, when it triggers again, do that. So it's going to slowly do that. It's going to slowly start building up a bunch of uh, sparks everywhere. And it says, uh, because normally you would roll the partition die, which is this. And then you would place it based on the dots. Oh, let me go back over here. There's pips at the bottom of the card. So for this one, for the first round, I'm only going to do just one total. For the second round, I'm going to I'm going to do two total. And third round, I'm going to do three total. Uh, so it's going to be building up a lot of uh, a lot of sparks, a lot of black circles around me. So I'm going to be cautious of managing that to some degree. And then, of course, we have the victory point tokens, which we'll get to. All right, so that's that. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and set up the rest of the boss, which is I'm going to draw countermeasures. Uh, countermeasures equal to these cards. There's one at the top of each of these. There's three spaces, one of each. And it's basically the three rounds that we play in this game. 
or there, there will be three rounds played in this game, I should say. And the round count is determined by how many of those numbers show up there. So this one just happens to be three rounds. Or three, um, three, uh, what is it called? Three phases? I don't know. Whatever wording we want to use. So what I'm doing right now, just to make this random, is there's seven of each card. There's seven of each rank of card. So bronze, silver, gold. I put them in these sleeves. I'm going to shuffle them all together because there's only, uh, was that, 21 cards. And it's, it's kind of difficult to shuffle seven cards to keep it random. So I'm going to draw one red, one yellow, and one green. And that's about as random as I need to get. And now we try to figure out our starting. So this is our starting one, which I think I've played this before. Uh, this one says the goal um, have a neutral or have a neural hub on the following number of servers. Uh, just one, two for two or two or three, sorry, two for two or three players and three for four or more players. So I need to have one green square on any server. It says uh, on the following number of servers. Yeah, so just one green square on any of the servers. Which I guess kind of sets me up for some other stuff, but that's a little annoying because I kind of, you know, the green is, the green is cool, let you do some cool things. I might build a green over there on Faith, but we'll see. All right, so that's all set up. Um, also, because I'm playing solo, uh, for every player, this is a five player game, for every player that I don't have, I get one of these circles for free. So I will go ahead and place these. These circles are nice because they allow me to use movement. Uh, if I use a movement and I move from a space with one of these circles to a space with one of these circles as well, then that movement is cost zero, so it's free. I still have to initiate the movement with the movement item. Um, and then also if I move from a space without one of those into a space with one of those, then a the movement is free as well. So it gives, basically gives me a way to kind of teleport across a line. Uh, best to use to make bridges between servers because there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. So I'm gonna make this kind of like a like a little little bit of a walkway here. Cause I really wanna get over there. Actually, let me get in here. Cause I really wanna get into here and start working on that a little bit. Uh, and my goal is to make a neural, neural hub, which is the, the green square on that spot. So hopefully I get some green cards to actually do that. Uh, this might be a little bit challenging because greens are not necessarily hard to come by, but just a little bit annoying to, to use. But ultimately, we'll, we'll see if I can make this work. Now we're going to draw our hack shack, which is where I can buy better cards. The cool thing about this game is as a deck builder, uh, instead of... Ooh, nice. Starting off with the project consciousness already. Wow. Um, as a... Um, as a deck builder, you actually, when you buy the cards, you immediately get the card in your hand. You have to kill one of the cards in your hand uh, to get it. So you have to pay for it. And the cards you, the, of the cards you used to pay for, you would throw that card away and then get the brand new card into your hand immediately. My deck will never be more than 15 cards, and I can only buy one card at a time. Two, three, four, five. But I can buy, I can buy multiple cards in a turn, or in a, in a round. But I can only buy one card at a, at a time. So, all right. At any rate, uh, we'll go ahead and play it as we go. Here's my cards, so you can see. And uh, right out the back, I think I'm going to go ahead and get that Project Consciousness right now. Um, part of me wants to try to get Adrenaline Surge too. Actually, oh, I really want Adrenaline Surge. Yes, uh, shoot. So I'm going to go ahead and spend Trickery Master as a, the purple as a wild to buy Adrenaline Surge, which costs one. It kind of sucks because I'm losing a resource, technically, to get a little bit more locked into another resource, but... This will be fine. This will be fine. This is fine. So I'm discarding that from the game, and then I'm buying this. So I, I spent it as money. It would normally go to my discard, but because I've purchased it uh, for um, for um, from the hack shack, it immediately goes into my hand. And then that card, I, one of those cards I used to purchase, it gets discarded. And then for here, I'm gonna go ahead and spend these two cards. Actually, mm. let me let me consider this because like I don't I don't want to throw the balance off too much of my deck. But also, Adrenaline Surge is just really nice for putting out stuff. Adrenaline Surge allows me to um, either get two green symbols, or I can... Um, oh, so also, when this card is a part of an upload action, which I really need to do so I can make this happen, then I can put one additional contaminant of that type on that partition. And in order for me to fully create that green square, what I need to do is I need to have three of these re uh, green circles existing in a spot that I'm at, so I need three of those green circles on my spot, or on this on the location I'm at. And then once I have those three green circles, I need to play another green circle to convert these into a square. And I must make sure that there's no sparks. There's no uh, there's none of these black circles there. So adrenaline surge is nice because it allows me to uh, to put an additional one. And uh, as another note, whenever you add one of those, you got to spend three of the symbol. 
So that's why it's even better. And this one says, uh, or execute to instead teleport one installation to your partition. Okay. That card's still good. I'm still going to get that one. So I'm going to... Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to spend these three. <gasps> these three is green to discard that one out of the game. This one goes to my discard. And this card comes with my hand. So I got Project Consciousness. And now I can do some really cool stuff. So <clears throat> I'm going to use Project Consciousness plus this card, which kind of sucks because I'm spending a whole bunch to do it because I'm overspending. Sadly, I don't have uh, another green. Uh, or alternatively, I could, I could just try to ditch this card instead of that bypass. So I can do a... You know what? I think I'll do that. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm instead going to spend this purple plus these two symbols. So that's going to be three green to pay for it. And then I'm going to throw away Sabotage, which I'm the red player. It kind of sucks for me to get rid of my red cards. But for right now, this is fine because I'm really focused on trying to do that. And then on this turn, I'm going to spend one, two, three, four, five, six to upload two containments, uh, contaminants of green. And then because of this ability, I get to also do additional ones. So I get all three in one turn, which is even better. Because that, that makes it to where I can get that done immediately. So I'm going to spend all those cards to get three of these. One, two, three. And then uh, this card, I'm going to hold on to for this round. At the end of each round, or at the end of each turn, um, during, the, during the phase... <laughs> um, man, these words are really weird. Um, that allows me to hold on to one card. So I'm going to hold on to one card and draw five more. So I have a hand of six instead of five. Three, four, five. All right, I got to move. That's cool. I have no greens, though. And then these are going to refill. And then this ability is going to kick in. But because this is the first round, I skip the activation of that, which would have happened at the end of my turn. So now I have this turn to go do stuff. I have a whole bunch of symbols that are completely useless to me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just try to upgrade some stuff which I will spend these two green to buy that one. So I'm throwing this out of the game, getting that immediately. Then I'm gonna spend this one data steal to get this blue. Might as well upgrade when I can. And then I'm gonna spend these three symbols here. And I'm gonna keep the double yellow and throw away the single yellow to get replicant jar. And I don't want that overwrite interrupt uh, just yet because uh, I have some better stuff. So I've done some good upgrading. So I now have still five cards in my hand because I had a sixth one from previous turn. And with Replicant Jar, it says, um, execute, I can flip any number of contaminants on my server to the other side. Nice. Now, one of the things I should mention is that these uh, contaminants, there can never be more than four of a contaminant on the same spot. So that means, or sorry, never, no more than three. So I cannot add a fourth green in there. And if I were to activate that ability and I were to flip some stuff, um, that would be cool, but I don't think I really need to. Uh, part of me wants to go ahead and get this out of the way with this getting the uh, the thing installed, which would be nice. Uh, and this ability says I can either activate it for this yellow and this purple, or I can delete one spark, one uh, black circle, on my partition. And then I may add one replicant, one yellow, if I desire. Hmm. Should probably get to where some sparks are, so I can start fighting some sparks. Uh, Nightem Chip is another card that I got, and that one allows me to either use it as one movement, or I can execute it to instead move from an open partition to any other open partition as a move action. And an open partition, just to clarify, is the edge of the board. So any spot that's not landlocked is called an open partition. Closed partitions are the spots that are in the middle that are landlocked. And once again, this goes back to the term. Like, this terminology, you have to learn a whole new language to play this game. And it's like, eh, for, for a game like this with as many moving parts, and it's like, this is just an abstract strategy game. I agree. I agree with the criticism. I, just, I, I still like the game, but I agree with the criticism. So moving forward. Um, so that might be nice for movement. I have to get to the edge first, but I'm not on the edge. So this is actually kind of a useless card right now. The question is, do I want to make my neural network here and then next turn or next um, next phase after we're done with this particular round in the yellow yellow phase or in the silver phase, try to teleport it? Because uh, the consciousness card that I got allows me to teleport an entire installation, which is nice. 
and uh, the green square, what the green square does, by the way, just to clarify, is the green square allows me to act as if I were on every spot. If, if I'm in the same spot as a green square, so if I'm in the same spot as a green square, it allows me to play cards here as if I were standing here, 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 or here. And I can choose. So, so it allows me to ghost, it allows me to pretend my avatar is somewhere else, and then do actions from there. Um, I think the wording on it, let me, let me double check. I think the wording on it is as if my, I'm starting my turn from there. It says, can take any actions as if you were on any partition on that server, yeah. So, it, because I play the cards one at a time, it's effective like I'm, I, you know, I play, I can play a fight and I can fight this card and I can play a fight and fight that card and play a fight and fight that card, do th three different fights from one spot. And uh, that's a very useful ability. So I'm kind of focused on trying to get the green square summoned because that one might allow me to get some really good fights since I got some fights here. So the thing I'm trying to, I'm worried about right now is like, do I want to go ahead and do I want to spin this to flip over the thing or do I want to overspend and do this to upload or to create the green square? I think at this point, it's, it's more beneficial for me right now to spin this card. Yes, it's a cool ability. Yes, I'm way over spending, but I'm going to spin this card to act as a one green, which allows me to create the green square, which is a part of the goal. So I got that all achieved. And then now I can take actions as if I were standing on all these spots in red. And then uh, uh, installations you cannot move normally. But like I said, because I have the uh, project consciousness card, the Project Consciousness card power is that I can um, instead teleport one installation to your partition. It says teleport one installation to your partition. So I can just move that around all I want. So it's pretty nice I got that card really early. And this achieves a goal, so like this is encouraging me to do stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start fighting stuff. And when I fight, uh, I think when I Project Consciousness, is I'm on that spot. So what that means is that I'm not able to like actually take advantage of bonus fight from this but my character's special ability which i haven't talked about yet is i get plus two for fighting when it comes to fighting uh, against the black die or against the black circle so that's nice so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do project consciousness to because i'm on the spot i get to do it here so i'm projecting my i'm, I'm ghosting right now to do this ability which is uh the execute and allows me to delete a black and then replace it with a yellow so I'm going to delete this black. Actually, I'm going to delete this black. Oh, I'm going to delete this black. And then I'm going to replace it with a yellow. Oop, over there. So I played that card. And then I'm going to go ahead and just fight these other two. So I'm going to try to fight this one. And this is going to be 1-2. So I'm discarding this card to do a fight. So I'm playing 1-2, 3-4 uh, versus 1. So 4 versus 1, I roll the dice. And uh, the, so I have four, so I got seven and the black got six. So I, be, I beat the black, so the black dies. So that was a successful battle, it was very close though. And I'm gonna do it again. So one, two, three, four versus this one. And we're gonna fight. And I win again. So that's a seven, two, three. That's a seven, yeah, seven to three. So the black dies. Right, cool, so I cleared all the things on my spot and I still got some move left. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this move to mosey on over there to do some stuff. So I'm gonna play this Night on ship. Actually, I'm gonna hold on to it because I'm gonna see what I get next turn. Also, I'm gonna see what this spider's gonna do with this spawning since now it's gonna spawn. So now we're at the end of our turn. Uh, we're gonna refresh. Well, let's do things in order. We're first gonna do this. It says remove the partition die, which is already done. And we're gonna spawn one total and it says, uh, at any time during during each, at any time during each end of turn step, delete all things, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, cool. And, oh, sorry. Remember the princess, spider places one black on each, on, sorry, on a server's lowest number partition with the fewest sparks. So the server with the fewest sparks, there's four different servers, I guess I get to choose. I don't know if the game specifies if I don't get to choose or not, but the game doesn't seem to be specifying. So it says place, yeah, places it on each spot. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'll take it back. Sorry, I get rid of the partition die, which is this one. I don't get rid of this die. This is the server, this is, okay, got it. 
that makes more sense. I was going to say, how's, how am I supposed to place this? So I get rid of that. So we're going to do green and we're going to put one here. Got it. That makes more sense. I'm following. So we still use this, but we don't use this. We get rid of that. Got it. Man, it took me that long to figure that out. Ah, these rules, I swear. <laughs> And once again, that's, that's another thing that goes with the uh, the wording. Like, yes, I could have looked up the rule book, and yes, I could have tried to figure out which dice is called what, but it's much easier for you to say, get rid of the number die, and then keep the color die. Like, it's much, like, if you just say, get rid of the number die and get, get uh, keep the color die, then this becomes much more accessible. Because instead of me having to go, like, you know, convert the term from what the game says to what the actual thing is, I now could just go and play the game. Um, this game you definitely have to play with some kind of reference until you get really familiar with the game and uh, as one of the criticisms that somebody mentioned that I that will echo here and I've echoed previously but I'll echo it again is this whole thing of this rule book was written or is the rule book and the keywords were written as if somebody knew the game already and it's like yes I agree I agree 100% because like it's much easier for me to say get rid of the color die and keep the number die I'm oh, sorry get rid of the number die and keep the color die it's much easier for me to say that than it is for me to say um uh, remove the partition die and then imply that I'm supposed to keep this die like which which one dude, there's there's four dice here which one's the partition die I see these die I know I'm supposed to use the fight and between these two this one I guess and then here we are okay cool anyway complaints aside let's continue moving so that's not that bad hack check's gonna refill uh can ooh exotic software I want that card it's uh, it costs one of each symbol and it does some cool stuff. It gives me three uh, three randoms. So I'm gonna do all five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And I might be able to buy it if I really wanted to, but I feel like it's kind of expensive. So, um, hmm. Part of me wants to go and deal with the purple server, but I feel like that green server down there is gonna eventually become a problem. So the real question is, do I really want to commit to moving? Uh, uh, eh, not really. All right, let's see, what can I buy? I can get rid of this decrypt to get this, which is a, it's two for two, it's a better, it's a better one. Uh, I can get rid of, um, ooh, exotic software, oof, that one is, uh, I need a red, a yellow, a blue, and a green. Let's see, I can do a red, a green, a blue, and I need a yellow. So I gotta overspend for it. Uh, I don't really need greens anymore, at least not at this moment. Uh, greens allow me to push stuff, which is nice. I can like push stuff around, but I don't really wanna push anything at this moment. So I think I'll get rid of this as a green, and then I'll spend these. So I'm spinning these, this is my red, this is my blue, this is my yellow, and this is my green. So I'm spinning those. And of those three that I'm getting rid of, uh, I will let this one go out of the game. And I'll collect exotic software. And exotic software says execute uh, to delete any two contaminants on my partition and then add any one installation? What, any one installation? That's a big deal, holy crap. I can get rid of two contaminants to make one square it says any two contaminants on your partition and you then you may add one installation. Wow, that's that's actually really good. I, I was barely paying attention to that card when that happened. Uh, so what I'm thinking of doing actually is I'm thinking of uh, taking advantage of the fact that I can do that. This, this might put me in, a, in an awkward spot. Okay, let, hold on, let me see, before I do that, what does this one do? It says, uh, execute to place this card and up to two cards and others on the bottom of your deck. Ah, I don't want that. That's useless right now. This is uh, execute to instead move. Uh, we already know about that one. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm liking that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, oof. I need another uh, thing though, because I don't want to get rid of my bridge. But I guess I got to. Yeah, I kind of got to. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin this to get this card. So, uh, sorry, I'm spinning this, well, spinning this one red, throwing out of the game to get this card, which is a uh, one red, but it's a little bit better. This one has an ability of plus two for fighting. Oh, that's an interrupt. This is or interrupt. Oh, I've been doing that wrong. 
I think I did one of those rolls wrong. Oh, no, no, that's, that's not. Yeah, I've been doing it right so far. Okay. So this one, I can either use this symbol to start a fight, or I can interrupt. It says, or interrupt after any effect action to add plus two. But my, my normal ability is just, I just get, get to add plus two. So, so far I've been playing this correctly, but in my previous playthroughs that I've tried to record that did not work out too well, um, those ones, I played that wrong. But this one, I'm playing it correct. Okay, we're good so far. Okay, so I don't think I can upload anything else, so I gotta take my blue bridge with me, which sucks. So I'm gonna play a knight on ship, and I'm gonna carry the, well, oh, man, I forgot about that. I can only carry one type with me. I can't take both with me. Eh, what the heck, I'm gonna take this with me, I'm gonna move over here, I'm just gonna fight him. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a fight. Can I initiate a fight without playing a card? That's the question. Let's see. And that's the action that I'm doing is called Infect. If the hacker is on a spot with a red containment token and a flare token, they may play one red card to start a fight. Okay. I'm in. It looks like I might have played one of those previous ones wrong as well. I think I can only fight if there's a red token there. So we'll chalk it up to me misinterpreting the rules. Um, I'll put in the. Um, I'll be sure to put that in the the notes so y'all can know. Um, it took me a while to figure it out, but here I am. So I can start a fight. I had to play this, and there's one there. So this is gonna be one, two, three, four versus one. Hopefully I win this one because I don't want to lose my bridge. Oh, oh no, my dice flying everywhere. Uh, that's gonna be a victory. It's a four. Sorry, that's three, four, five, five to four. Oof, it's a very close victory. Narrow victory, actually. All right, cool. Now that I've done that, now we're going to go ahead and do exotic software. We're going to play that card to convert these two into a installation, which if I get the blue installation, that allows me to teleport anywhere. If I get the red installation, that allows me to... Uh, the red installation allows me to generate reds easier. And the original plan was for me to generate some reds easier, because I guess I need reds to fight. So I'm definitely going to do the red then. So let me get the red over here. And now I'm going to play this card to not move or anything, but I'm just going to use it to be a red. Uh, and now I can upload with a one-to-one, -one, which is pretty nice. All right, so that's it for me. Uh, now I've got a little red here to fight, and hopefully these don't go badly with the spawning, but we'll see. So now Spider's going to do Spider's thing. It's going to do it in my server. So it's going to do it in my server, which is uh, the spot with the least number of contaminants, which is this one, which is perfect. This is ideal. That was a good roll. Or is that? No, that's the home server. Oh, no, that's the home server. Sorry, I lied. It's my home server. Let me double check. Is that the home server or my current server? So there's two chances for bad things that happen in red. Uh, if I can find the dice, where's the dice? Come on, rulebook, work with me, work with me here. Uh, partition die, yep, so the number one's a partition die, and the server die is this other one. Let's see. I'm not seeing an explanation here. Server die is setting up, okay. It will eventually say somewhere. Probably says in the countermeasure section or in the, yeah. Looking for either a symbol or a picture. Man, for all the symbols they have in this, it's like a little bit strange. We don't at least have a little bit here. All right, uh, we're on the back of the rulebook here. This is where hopefully it will be. This is your insulation shown when referencing collectively to any insulation, which is a white square. Uh, doesn't say. All right, welp. Um, I'm not finding it right now. Um, I'll probably correct this if I'm playing it correctly, but I will interpret that as because it's more perilous for me. I will interpret that as my home server. I will interpret that as my home server. Uh, like I said, I'm not able to find 
just yet in the rule book anything telling me where that actually goes. I'm trying my hardest though, because I want to play correctly. Or as correct as I can. Oh, 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 I found it. Hold on. Oh no, I did not find it. Got everything in the rule book except for the stuff we're looking for, y'all. And Sparks and Guardians, got a whole section for that. Uh, countermeasures. Uh, yeah, well, looks like uh, looks like I'm at the phase of having to give up as much as I don't want to. Because y'all know I really want to play this uh, as correct as I can. As correctly as I can. Or at least if y'all didn't know that, now you know. So, there you go. And I'm totally not just saying words to stall, so I can try to find this, this stupid uh, dice face here. Totally not doing that at all, I promise. I promise. <clears throat> no, I'm totally doing that. I'm exactly doing that. Yeah, so I'm not able to find in the rule book. Um, but the face here shows the person, so I'm assuming that's the player's home server. I don't know if that's supposed to be the player's server that they're currently on or their home server. It makes more sense if it's their home server. So it's gonna spawn here. Alright, that's how I'm interpreting that. Uh, we'll just assume that I interpreted it correctly. Alright, so that's where that goes, and that's gonna suck because now we're at the end of the round. Uh, now at the end of the phase, I should say, all the things are going to fight. So if there was a black and a red, they will fight each other, which means it was advantageous for it to spawn here with me. But <clears throat> instead it spawned here, so these two are going to fight each other. This one's going to lose immediately because it has no defense. And unfortunately, the spark took over in that spot. Now we go over to the card, the challenge card, and it says goal have a neural hub on the following number of servers, which is just one for me because I'm playing a one player game. So now that we've done that, we're going to flip this over and see what the pass, because I passed. I was successful in that one. So the success card here says, <clears throat> it says add one data port anywhere on the network. Nice. I got a whole data port. Sweet. That's even better, because I was about to make a data port. I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't have to, because the card just gave me one. All right, so I get to add one data port anywhere on the network. Uh, and one thing in the network is the entire board. So I think I'll add a data port. Uh, and it allows me to teleport from a data port to a spot anywhere. Let me double check. So data port uh, costs one move. So costs one movement point to move to any partition. It says any partition. Oh, any partition. Okay. Uh, it costs zero movement points to move to a partition containing a data node port. You still must play a blue command to do that move. So I got to put a blue square anywhere. I uh, kind of want to put the blue square where I am, but that one's at risk of being uh, surrounded. And if it gets surrounded, remember, it's deleted immediately uh, during the end of turn if I don't have it uh, managed. So I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and just try, try to or just bite the bullet a little bit. And I'm going to put the data ports. Hmm. Now, you know what? You know what? Fine. Screw it. We're going to do it here. We're going to put it here. We'll do it live. And we'll put it there. So that way I can just teleport anywhere right now. Uh, yes, it's more, a little bit more of a short-sighted goal. I should put this a little bit further away so I can kind of have a little bit more of a reason to kind of move around places. But I'm, I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to keep it here for now. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out more. Not too far. There we go. And now we're going to move over to the next round. And the next round is going to be this challenge. This challenge is Viral Overload. <coughs> Excuse me. The goal is to have one or more viruses on every open partition on Virtue and, and Salvation. So this is Virtue, this is Salvation. So I need to have one or more viruses, which is the reds, on here, 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 here. Wow. Holy crap. That's a, that's a task. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm the red player, so I should have more reds, but I do remember spending one red to do a thing. So... This might be a bit of a challenge, for sure. Uh, all right, let's see if I can make it. I, I think this might be a fail for me, y'all. We got Adrenaline Surge, Console Cowboy, and Black Market. Oh, this card dies. And then we get Data Shift. <clears throat> and we'll shuffle. And I gotta, I gotta get some reds. Um, thankfully, I can teleport anywhere now that I decided to put that there, but oof. I kind of wish those t those were landlocked, but that's that's a nearly six reds. I can take that one red with me, I think, because I'm teleporting. I'm not projecting consciousness. Let me see. All right. 
right. Um, I think I'll... So if, if I get the ideal card draw, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to move here, use project consciousness or using the, my projecting consciousness stuff to like build a red here, build a red here. Actually, I can't do that. Mm. And, and then ultimately I'm going to use that one, that one fancy card I have to move this installation over here and then try to get these four spaces. Uh, we'll see if I have enough cards. I don't know if I have enough action points to do that. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll see. All right, this is this is this is ideal. So I did not draw the card yet, so I can do a little bit first. Uh, man. And uh, we're gonna start spawning two sparks uh, at the end of all of my turns. So I do need to start managing those things too. I think I think I've done pretty good as far as managing things. That uh, getting this neural link was a really good idea. It it felt it felt like it felt painful because I don't really like that particular. Uh, Ability like it just kind of confuses me a little bit, but also it felt cool to have that plus console or plus the um, the project consciousness card, which that's not called. This a what's it called? Neural hub. Having a neural hub that early is pretty nice, and then the project consciousness card, which we already know that I have, allows me to move an installation and just move it to where I am. That's pretty. That's some pretty cool stuff. Some pretty sweet stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of the fact that I'm here with this, which is uh, what is this called? This is called a propagator. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to spin one symbol to get one uh, to get one circle. So I'm going to spin two. I'm going to spin two reds to generate two reds. And then I'm going to look at the shop up here, see if there's anything worth getting. Uh, for sure, adrenaline surge is nice. I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to spin this one card uh, to buy this one card. And uh, because it's a normal card, it goes out of the game. I'm sorry, because I'm buying from the hack shack, as to say. And console cowboy, let's see, it costs three, and it gives me four X's. So it costs three X's. I have no X's. Well, I have one X. And it says, uh, execute to instead delete a guardian from your partition. That could be nice later on. I don't have any guardian problems yet, <clears throat> but I could have a guardian problem after the at the end of this viral overload. Uh, the black market one allows me to reveal it to discard any cards of my choice in the hack shack and then immediately restock them pretty nice and then data shift allows me to move up to three contaminants from any adjacent partition into mine uh data shift could be nice later on so i'm, I'm considering spending this card to get black market uh, this execute ability is uh, to place this card plus two others at the bottom and draw some more uh, it basically gives me like a mulligan plus I'll know it's at the bottom. And I think I think I'll I think I'll I think I'll go ahead and play the card, read request intercepts, and I'll just play it as a move. And I'm gonna use it to teleport myself to anywhere I want to go, taking these three with me. And I'm gonna teleport myself anywhere. Uh, if I move to one of these spots, I have it costs me zero move. If I move to one of these spots, it costs me one move to do the whole thing. So I think I'll just teleport here. Oh, no, I'll, t I'll definitely teleport here. So I spent two movement to move, to just move, I guess, uh, which kind of sucks. Um, hmm. Oh, no, I, I need to have one of these reds to fight anyway. Right, right, we, we've already talked about this. So, um, so I've spent, I activate my movement. I'm teleporting here, and it's going to cost me zero, and I have two movement less, so I'm going to use action points one to move there. And I'm just going to stay here because there's no reason for me to move back here and do project consciousness or to um, use the neural link, I should say, because it's like, I just need to be here. That's all. It's the only place I need to be at. So I'm going to go ahead and spin this. <clears throat> and when I do, it's going to call, it's going to give me a fight. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So no matter what I roll, I'm going to win. Like, yeah, no matter what I roll, I'm going to win. It's, so it's auto victory because this can get a max of seven. I'm going to get at least eight. So it's going to die. So it goes away. And then next we have Adrenaline Surge and Focus again. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and upload or make a, a green. Uh, no, I'll hold on to it. Well, otherwise it's gonna go to waste. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a green. Kinda sucks, but I'll make a green. All right, there we go, whoops. And now all I need to do is I need to get the Project Consciousness card to pull this over here and also get a move. So I need to move one. And then project conscious over here, and then try to try to shift these around or move this around. Um, 
Actually, I do need to put one of these here, don't I? Oof, I forgot about that. Oh, you know what? I might need to go back over here because I need to make more reds. Ah, shoot. I, I planned proper. I planned improperly, y'all. <laughs> I planned improperly. <laughs> in hindsight, I should... No, I couldn't have. I was gonna say, in hindsight, I should have made as many reds as I could and then moved over here, but I couldn't because there's a space limit of three anyway. So actually having this here is not that big of a deal uh, because I can push things away from that spot as if I were there. That's called a uplink. And uh, I, can, I can initiate a shift command from any other partition that contains an uplink. So having one uplink here and then having another uplink over here allows me to push as if I were standing there. Whereas the neural, the neural hub is nice because I can act as if I'm on that server. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So it allows me to kind of spread myself out, you know, be in multiple places at once. All right, anyway, uh, we're gonna roll the dice, partition die. And we got my home server again, and it's gonna spawn right here. Uh, so I'm actually okay with just leaving it there and letting it sit for a little bit. Oh, it's gonna be two, sorry. Uh, it says to the lowest number of partition with the fewest sparks. Okay, so it's gonna go here then. All right, that's fine. That's where things are gonna go. That might affect me as far as um, fighting stuff, but I, I'm, I'm okay with this for now. For now. This refills. One, two, three, four, five. All right, there's our project consciousness. Uh, a little bit unfortunate because I need to go fight those things now. Uh, let's see. Ooh, 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 I got my self-modifying inhibitor. That allows me to convert this into a yellow if I just spend it as is. Uh, what else do I have up here? <clears throat> I have a double green uh, ginger cool. It says, uh, or interrupt after any spark roll to instead change that face, ch change the face of one of the spark dice to whatever I desire. Mm. That can be nice as far as making sure that I don't get bad things in bad places. Uh, I think I think I think I'll risk it. I'll, I'll just leave that card there for now. Or I, actually, no, I take it back. I'm gonna go ahead and spin this memory steel because it's a base card. I'll get this fancier card. So at least I'll refill that. Sure, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and spin the self modifying inhibitor. Actually, hmm. hmm. So I need to end my turn over here. Doesn't matter where. I just need to end it over there. Yeah, I can do that. So, so what, what I'm kind of, what I'm kind of mulling over right now is I'm kind of mulling over using this here and then carrying one of these reds with me anyway, and then moving back somewhere else. But that requires me to spend one of these as blue. I, I don't want to spend this as blue because I need two move. That's going to be one, two, which will give me over here. So I'm gonna to try to save this to move back this way. I just need to move one over here and then play this card. So that means I have to play this card. So I'm gonna play this ginger cool. I'm gonna move one here, okay, it's with me. And I'm gonna play this card to convert this into a yellow. And then after I do that, I'm gonna use this two move to move one and then carry this with me, two. And the problem is I need to I need that to win the fight. It's gonna be it's gonna be a straight up roll of red versus black i can either come back and try to try to fight it and try to win or i might have a might have a bad time so the the true question is do i do i want to go back and try to take care of this or do i want to move forward i think i think moving forward makes sense because i can't really do anything else anyway uh, so i'm going to go ahead and use project consciousness ability to move this insulation over here and this is kind of a rough place for it to be, but I need to put this here. Actually, hold on. Hold on. Oh no, this is on the server. I was about to say, because what if I put this over here and then made a whole bunch of reds and then walked them over here with teleports. But it's, uh, it's as if you're on any spot in that server. So if if I'm if I'm gonna do that, can I use can I use a port while I'm projecting? 
Because if I can use a port while projecting, that kind of breaks everything, you know? Like in a good way. A good way for me, because that means I can I can move the port over. So, I, so with that two move that I had, I can do one, two. And then I can move the neural thing over here. Well, actually, I only have to move the neural thing at that point. Yeah, because... Oh, no, I, I would have to. Yeah, I would have to move the neural thing. And then I could project myself and to use the hub, but I need to walk to do so. And then start walking the reds over here. I would need a lot of movement to do that, actually. That might not be uh, good. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, it's, it's better for me to just straight up install the things over here. Um, this is unfortunate because I don't think I don't I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve this goal unless I go back over there. Because if I go back over there and I have at least three reds, I can make the three things I need and then teleport over here and walk and place those. Which means I can preserve my project consciousness and use it for something else. Uh, that means I'm going to throw away this card instead, which I guess is fine. Uh, I have nothing to do with it over here. I'm just going to throw it away. Now, I don't know if this is any symbol or if that has to be a purple exactly. Because if it's any symbol, then I can convert that uh, diversion into a black market, which will be in nice symbols. So let me check with the hack shack. Shop action. Uh, like that'd be really convenient if that's what if that was the case. All right, so command cards um, generates one of the symbols, uh, executes, do the thing. Uh, hmm. The rule book's not saying, y'all. Uh, I'm not finding a clarification based on my very rudimentary search here. Let me scroll to the back here. <laughs> scroll. <laughs> Let me jump to the back of the rule book here. And let's see. I am getting a bunch of nothing. I'm getting a bunch of nothing. For the shop, it says spend money equal to the purchase cost and give an advance card. You know what? Because it's beneficial to me and because uh, the rule book doesn't seem to be specifying at least that one exact specific question, you know, you can make arguments that the questions I'm asking are very specific. But for a game that's using, um, that's using very advanced terminology like install and delete and all this sort of fun stuff, I feel like they should put the rules. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'll buy that with this. Cool, we're just gonna say that's, that's legal. Uh, if it's not legal, I'll, ch I'll check the forums afterwards and see if it was and if it wasn't, but moving on. Um, and this one says, uh, I get to reveal it to discard any number of cards in the shop. I don't wanna do it, but I got two purples, which is nice. Um, oh, wasn't I undoing this? I was undoing this. I kinda don't wanna. I think I just need to walk back over there. So if I do one, yeah, okay, cool. Perfect, I'll spin this black market as two walks then. That's gonna be one, two, like so. Because information superhighway. And then that puts me into a position I wanna be in anyway. All right, cool, look at that. Nailed it. All right, we're gonna generate two sparks. Hopefully they're not in bad places. They're in bad places. <laughs> they're in bad places. Uh, so we're gonna have one, two, that's unfortunate. Now I really have to go down here and deal with this nonsense, but I don't want to. And that means I might have to use project con- well I can't because it's in the wrong server. Alright, we got five. One, two, three, four, five. This is going to be rough. This is going to be- oh my gosh, I have not enough reds to do it either. I gotta spend my exotic software to do it. Uh, I forgot I had exotic software, by the way. Because that means I could have totally just built a brand new- uh, green over there. Whew. Shoot. Well, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts a lot. Um, hmm. So how am I going to get out of this one? So I can flip any contaminants to the other side. 
which will give me an extra red in this spot here. If I can get down there, or if I decide to go down there. Um, Night and ship is actually really nice because I need to be on the edge anyway, on the open servers. Or sorry, yeah, on the open uh, server areas, open partitions. So that's actually pretty good. Night on ship might actually save my butt here, but I got I got to get to the edge. I'm not on the edge right now. Oh, I got to fill this up. Uh, oh, hey, iteration, iteration. This card says, uh, and reveal during your turn along with another card from your hand to perform the that other card's execute events. Oh, it says reveal. So I get to play and reveal during your turn along with another card to perform that card's. Oh. So if I spend one of each symbol, then I can actually get that card. I don't want to spend one of each symbol, though, because I kind of need all my cards. But let, me, let me think. How can I imagine this? What other execute ability exists that I want? Um, I guess the exotic software execute ability is nice. And the replicant jars execute is pretty cool or pretty okay. I'm going to buy it, though. That's one, two, uh, I'm using one of these three. Uh, <laughs> Pooey, this is, this is not ideal. So can I use this card as a part of building reds, even if I'm not using this card to build any reds? Cause like that gives me the ability. So I'm like discarding it along with this to get two reds. I don't know if the rule book says anything about that. Uh, this one would be nice because it allows me to flip, like I can flip that yellow into a red. So when the fight happens, even if I lose a fight, I lose just one red when a fight's lost. Actually, is that true? Oh, let me see. Let me see. This is the uh, Sparks Battle Step. So during the Sparks Battle Step, which I, I won't be able to help it, that's going to be a uh, so virus tokens must attack all spark tokens and guardians uh, but you cannot use command cards with infect actions but you can so but i can't play any cards repeat this as needed until virus tokens are no longer exist in the same partition as sparks okay so so they keep fighting till the end so it's going to be multiple roles and when they fight uh whenever whenever red loot whenever i lose uh, what happens, so if your infection score is greater than the SMC, then you delete all sparks. If your infection score is less than it, then uh, you've lost a battle, delete one virus token at that partition. So I can give myself better odds if I flip that one, but I'm spending this whole card to flip it. I don't think it's worth it, to be honest. And part of me just wants to go fight it, because if I do, then I can do that. Now, um, can I initiate a fight, an infection action? So I feel like it should be a card or a token. Uh, we, we've already established that I played it wrong earlier. So in order to initiate an infection, which is to uh, have these two fight each other, I need to declare the action, but I have to have at least one token there. So we've already established that. But my question is, can I initiate a fight without a card? It says infect action. Uh, the way you attack and delete sparks is by doing an infection action. Uh, you must have at least one virus token present to the effect action. And this says procedure. Uh, generate one or more destruct. Okay, so I have to play one card. So I have to generate one or more triangle to actually do that. Shoot. Alright, you know what? Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about the exotic software's ability. I'd rather do the execute so I can make another install installation. Maybe put it over here somewhere and be useful. Um, alternatively, I can build an installation here, or actually here. Oops. I can build an installation here and do some stuff, but. Hmm. This is not a good situation to be in. This particular challenge is really annoying. <laughs> that exact specific one. Now, there's a benefit to letting these stay in here, because if I do let them stay there, then when, if I spawn red again, which I've, I've rolled twice already, if I spawn red again, it's going to start building up here instead of building down here again. So if I clear these out, then I run the risk of them spawning back anyway, and then fighting anyway. So I feel like at that point, I'm risking wasting actions. Uh, and then over here for yellow, it's going to be here and here. So I'd rather have 
some reinforcements here in this spot. I'd rather have some reinforcements here in this spot and let that be. Uh, I am running dangerously close to this being surrounded at that point. So I do need to be wary of that, especially if the next card that comes up, the next challenge that comes up says spawn a bunch of stuff in green. So this is, um, this is, this, this is fun. This is fun because like I get to try to figure out the puzzle and this is like the kind of puzzling that I enjoy. Now the, the terminology and everything, we, I'm going to keep complaining about, complaining about that forever until somebody comes out with a reskin of this game with less complicated words. Not that big words are scary. Like I said, I've played PAX Emancipation, played PAX Transhumanity. I've played PAX, all, any PAX game in general I've played. Uh, well, not any, but a lot of PAX games I've played. Neanderthal and all this stuff. And those have really dense words. But this one's a little bit more annoying because I feel like this game is simpler than the words say it is. Just like PAX Emancipation, for instance, uh, for those who don't know, is a game that's basically Pandemic with more steps. Uh, which, this is Pandemic with more steps. But PAX Emancipation is like, you're you're doing like this train. You're chaining this to chain to that. And maybe I play. Maybe just because I play Pax Emancipation more, I played at least six or seven games of it. Because I have a friend who really enjoys playing that game, uh, and and now I don't mind it because it's a nice fun game. But all is said and done, yeah, it could be just an un, an unfamiliarity with the game so far with this one because I've only played this once or twice, actually twice I should say, um, all the way through. But yeah, all right, moving on. I think I need to spawn three reds, and then I need to distribute them, and then I need to go back and worry about that stuff. So I will spawn three reds by spending the, let's see, what's the cheapest way I can do this? I will spawn three reds by using exotic software. So I will lose that option to do uh, a free installation, which kind of sucks, but eh, it happens. So, oh, sorry, one, two, three. And then I will use my move action. I'm not going to use the night and ship ability, but I'm going to teleport myself. Uh, ooh, I need more moves. Oh no. Uh, shoot. Hold on. So the problem, the problem right now is that I need enough movement to move one, two, three at least. And that means that I am. Oh. Phil Dream. Uh, I need enough movement to move at least one, two, three, and I don't know. That might be a that might be a problem, y'all. I might have a problem here. Hmm. This is. Um, I can get one, two, three movement from these cards but I don't want to get it from those cards because I want to use this ability. I guess I don't need this ability anymore. I'm spending this to do the move so I can get one, two at least. Uh, all right, uh, what I can do instead, I'm, I'm still running the risk of these losing the fight and if any of these lose a fight, I'm gonna be really, really, really sad. So I'm not going to be able to reinforce those ones like I want to. I can make this a little bit less bad by uh, getting over here to push this over there, to push the black over there, and then do a fight. Because remember, I can push from the uh, greens. Oh, 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 I just thought of something. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Ah, uh, that's actually a good idea. Wait, wait, how does, how does that ability work? How does, how does the green work? Can initiate a ship's command from, oh, never mind, all right. Hope is lost. <laughs> All hope is lost. Is this can initiate a shift command from any other neural network, which means I can push a thing from one spot to another. Uh, heck. All right. Um, I can't puzzle that out, y'all. I don't know if I can puzzle that out to be successful. I can use my movement to get myself to the neural hub. And then I can go and try to fight the uh, reds there. I'm just not going to be able to distribute my reds that I have. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. We'll see if this works. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my, my um, movement to get over here. Like so. And also, um, 
Oh yeah, yeah, this is actually good because I get to project myself, which means I get the plus two. Okay, cool, perfect. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do... Uh, do I have enough movement for that? I do not have enough movement for that. All right, I've moved over here. And now that I've done that, I'm going to project myself fighting twice. So I'm going to project and fight there. And then I have to project and fight again here. Alternatively, I can project and flip this to be a red to give myself a better chance of winning that and then fight that one instead. The problem is I don't have enough movement to distribute the rest of those because I have to spin this card. So I think I'm going to have to let these go to a dice roll, uh, which is very unfortunate because I, I really need all the movement I have left to do these. So since I'm here, actually, hold on, before, before I commit to that, because this is... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I have one, two, three, four. Yeah, so I would need to... So I, I can't I can't afford to stay in this spot then. Ah, this is, this is heartbreaking. Okay, so we'll move here. And once we do, I have to leave one here. So this is one, two, and then I have another set of moves, which I can do one, two. And I think I think that's I think that's the play. That's the play I got. So I'm not gonna be able to use the fancy abilities to do anything cool. So I gotta spin that four movement to do this stuff. So I use the knight on ship to move from here to teleport there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use this to move for two, one. So this is one, two. So I got all the things in place, and then I'm going to use this movement. So that's, uh, spin that, well, it doesn't matter. Spin both of these. Use that two movement to do one, two to go here, and then I'm going to try to fight this guy. Um, and fingers crossed I win. So I get one, two, three, four to my dice roll. And we win. So now it's based on a dice roll, uh, which is very unfortunate. Um, I can use a shift, but the problem is I need this to be here, and I need to be over there. So this card is going to do nothing. Uh, wait, didn't I spin this already? I think I spent this already. Could I have done... No, because that, that's one, two, three to generate those three. Yeah, yeah, okay. There, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Uh, what, I, what I was thinking was like, maybe I can use this as a part of the building of those. But the problem is I can only have three of those in a spot and this already gave me the three I needed. Yeah, this is about as optimal as I can try to get it. So it's gonna be based on a dice roll. Uh, <laughs> very unfortunate that it's based on a dice roll. Because when you wish upon a die, um, then you just might die. So the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna spawn these to see if it's gonna be even worth uh, complaining about anyway. Blue, perfect. Great, so not the ones that we're concerned about. It's gonna be two up here. And now we do our fight. This is our one fight. I need, I just need a good dice roll. That is not a good dice roll. <laughs> That's a bad dice roll. I was like, did I win, did I win? Ah, oh, I forgot, I'm red. Uh, Welp. There you have it. This uh, kills this and this will murder that. Um, if I had another dice roll, what would it have been? Let me see. Out of one and second dice roll. See? See, I'm telling you, if I, if I had it, I didn't have it. Welp. That was very close, but I have failed. I have failed because of a single dice roll. Um, that is very frustrating, all that planning. All right, so I get the fail side of this one, which is it sucks, because like, I didn't fail by much. I failed by one. Come on, guys. Ugh. Fail says add two sparks to every open partition. Ugh. Every open partition? On virtue and salvation that does not contain a virus? Everyone? All of them? All of them? That's not good. That's that's awful. Why would you do that to me? My, my victory would have been add one spark to every partition on virtue and salvation that does not contain a virus. What? Wait, I don't want to succeed with that. Wait. Oh, oh, oh. It's either add one or add two. I see. 
Well, we got our first guardian. Um, so that's good news. And thankfully, because of Spider's ability, we do not do this whole shifting thing. So normally you would do the shifting of stuff, but Spider's ability says ignore the um, move phase, the move sparks phase. But this is bad because we have uh, our first guardian. Guardians are three to fight. Uh, so they have a plus three instead of a plus one. And then they also, if there's another spark that must spawn there, then the guardians will explode. As in they'll, they'll, they'll send a spark to each spot adjacent to it. Uh, so I need to deal with that. And I think the, I think one of these cards said delete. Um, yeah, this one says delete a guardian to console cowboy, and I let it go. I let it go. <sighs> to be fair, it all came down to a dice roll. So like, I feel like to some degree, you know, yes, I feel very sad with all the tactical decisions I made, but it all came down to a dice roll. It's one of those like, I guess, I guess, like that's 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 frustrating. Cause it's like, man, I spent so much time planning too. Um, two three four let me shuffle my deck here oh and then we have a new uh a new challenge and the final challenge which says decryption backlash decryption backlash goal uh clear every server's partition four and five of all countermeasures um uh, the backlash Sorry, the backlash during, sorry, the backlash during the end turn step, uh, lower, what? Lower sparks on your home server by one towards its, okay, hold on, let me, let me read this up close, this is, this is, I, I gotta, gotta get up my, my scholarly glasses here. <clears throat> so the goal is clear every server's partitions four and five, which... It's not that hard to do. I just got to do, uh, yeah, mine's is clear. I, I got to clear virtue or I, I got to clear the purple one. And then it says, uh, the backlash during your end turn step. Oh, 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 sorry. It, it's adding another thing. Okay. I see. I see. It's called the backlash, but during my end turn step, lower move, uh, sorry, move, move down sparks on your home server by one towards its lowest number partition without uh, any guardians or sparks jump over higher numbers partitions with a guardian uh, or stay in place when all progress is blocked finally add one spark to your access point that's it's called deception backlash by the way not decryption by the way um because i read that wrong all right oh i got my points here i do not get those points those those are no gotten because of one fight one stupid fight okay so I have another end of round thing to worry about. And how can I delete a guardian? Man, I can't believe I let that card go away that deletes a guardian outright. Uh, right when a guardian spawns. Right when a guardian spawns. All right, let's zoom out and, oh, too far. There we go. See too much of the background. All right, uh, I got to deal with that guardian to some degree. Oh, uh, is anything surrounded? Nothing surrounded. Okay, cool. We're good. We are good so far. <sighs> Man. Can I can I uh, do a modify to a guardian? I don't think I can. I just need to fight him. I got quite a bit of stuff going for me, though. It says or interrupt to infect. Uh, oh, sorry. Here's my cards. My bad. Y'all can't see that. I wonder if you just read my cards and forgot I was recording. Uh, these are cards that I have. Uh, with the self-modifying inhibitors, I could... Oh, there's no sparks for me to actually kill right now. Uh, oh, and we're, we're spawning three. We're spawning three, by the way, at the end of the um, turn. So I need to worry about that as well. Technically, we're spawning four. So, Because we're going to do one from here and then three from there. Right. Now I'm really at risk of being run overrun. Um, I really want to get those, uh, fetch those again, and then redistribute them, or maybe build another replicator, which is the uh, red square, so I can start building more reds to go fight. Because I really, I really need to get that guardian gone. Uh, there's a card that says move all, or move uh, three, move three contaminants to my space. I don't know if it's available. 
This one says, or execute to instead have one contaminant on your server partition, swap position with one spark. Oh, that's actually not awful. This one is delete one spark and add a modifier. So delete one black and add one yellow. Hmm. I kind of want to, hmm. I was just like, I kind of want to spin this on that. Which yes, it's the same card, but it clears the store so I can get some more stuff spawning because this is this is this is garbage. This is trash. Uh, here's the big one for this one. It says hologram or execute to instead teleport your avatar to any partition on the network as a move action. Okay. So I have to spin these three to get that, and I don't think that's worth it right now. This one's uh, execute to place this card. Actually, this is a good card right now. Yeah, this is actually not bad. So I'm gonna spin this. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use this execute ability which allows me to put this card plus two other cards at the bottom of my deck. And then when I do, then I draw three more to replace that, because I'm doing three. So I'm doing one, two, three, putting to the bottom, and then drawing one, two, three, one, two, three. Hey, we got Project Consciousness already. Kind of inconvenient, because now I don't really have much I can do, but I can do some fighting. Uh, can I fight, let's see. <clears throat> I want to fight that Guardian. I really want that Guardian gone. Like, that Guardian is going to be a menace until I get rid of him. <sighs> oh, sorry, Guardian. Sorry, if, a, if one Guardian has a spark added to it, it's going to generate two flares. And flares are worse than Guardians. Flares are, like, really gross. Flares are the yellow or, or the uh, the white ones, which we haven't seen. And flares are, I think they're plus two to fight. Let's see, what's 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 the deal with a flare? Ah, <clears throat> oh, it's four. It's plus four for a guardian. Are you kidding me? Ugh, gross. All right, what's, what's the deal with the flare? Where's, where's the flare section? Oh, here it is. Uh, flares are firewalls. They're, these are the reverse sides of things, cool. Uh, important, flares are sparks and firewalls are guardians. Uh, but with additional enhancements, anytime a card refers to sparks, they also refer to flares. Anytime a card refers to guardians, they also refer to firewalls. So anytime it refers to black, they refer to white, basically is what I'm saying. Uh, the instant a flare, uh, the instant a white token shares a partition with a contaminant, the flare immediately neutralizes one of them. Oh, I see. Uh, neutralized contaminants are unstable, however, and however, the neutralizing flare continues to fully function as a spark. Oh, unusable. Sorry, sorry. So whenever there's a white token in spot, then all of the things that I've added become unusable. They're not deleted, but they're unusable. Oh, no, it says here, the neutralized contaminant remains imprisoned by the flare until the flare is deleted. So the uh, if we have a white here, then it cancels out all the abilities of all the things here, which is which is tough. How am I supposed to fight him then? Oh, 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 it neutralizes one of them. Okay, okay, so it neutralizes one, not all of them. Okay, that's better. That's a lot less aggressive. Because I was like, how can I fight it then? If I can't bring any reds. Avatars cannot voluntarily enter a partition with a firewall. Cannot? What? Ooh. So the white squares, um, avatars cannot voluntarily enter a partition with a firewall. The instant an avatar, the instant a character, and a firewall share the position, relocate the avatar by rolling the spark die. How am I supposed to get, oh, so firewalls are just the big, like, just, just, you just gotta deal with it? Oh, man. Okay. All right, well, we don't want that happening. Uh, firewalls are just, Bad. They block your path and they stay there forever. And they're considered guardians. Oof. Alright. Well, that, that ramps up the difficulty quite a bit. So, I want to leave the replicator over here. Or that thing over there. The propagator. The propagator. I want to leave that over there. Because I'm going to move over there eventually start fighting all that stuff. Because I need to get rid of the fours and the fives. At least. But I also want to get rid of the rest of them. And then down here... Um, part of me wants to go ahead and try to upload another red. Try to add another red to the board. Uh, it's cheaper for me to do it over there. I can do console cowboy, or I can do a project consciousness, sorry, to bring it over here. 
and then start building it. But I think that's a little bit more of a short term goal. Long term, it might be a good idea to generate a blue so I can actually have a nice movement path that's actually much better than what I currently have. The question is, what card am I going to play to get that blue? This is tough. This is real, real tough. So this allows me to flip any number. Oh, perfect. All right, cool. What says any number? Ah, oh, man. I want to I make this more efficient. Shoot. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to use this one right now. Although I want to use it on that. It's way over there. So I'm going to use this as a move. I'm going to move over here. And then I'm going to... Uh, wait, can I push? Let me, let me see. Let me, let me check out the book here. All right. So uplink uh, can initiate a shift command from any other partition that contains an uplink. Can I push an uplink? What I, what this means is so what what I'm asking right now I should say is that um, am I because I can I can do a push from here to there like that. But can I push this? Like can I push itself? Uh, or is it any other? Is it any other? Oh, it's this other. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to use an uplink to push this to here. Like, you can't pull it, basically, which is unfortunate. As long as those clever word games I was just playing. So, if I hold on to project consciousness, I might be able. Well, no, no. I, I, I really, I really want to get rid of that. So, you're not fine. I'll pull this over here with project consciousness. I'm going to hate myself for this, but I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. I did it. And then I'm going to go ahead and generate, use infiltrate to make two more. Because I'm really going to need, a, I'm going to bring the big guns over here for this one. One, two. And then after I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're, going to, we're, going to, we're going to roll out. Autobots, roll out. Uh, we're going to move over to here. And then we're going to try to fight them with this. Actually, I'm going to try to fight them with this. This is more fight. And I need all the help I can get to fight that, because that's a four. And this is going to be three, four, five, six, seven. So four to seven with a dice roll. And with how I've been rolling dice, you know, I haven't been rolling dice that bad. But <clears throat> what has been bad has been bad. <clears throat> now, if I lose a fight against a guardian, does it delete all of my uh, stuff? Let's see. Let's see, guardian. No, it's still just one. All right, so, so it just reduced my power by one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to move over here. Autobots are rolling out. We're going to go over here, me and the posse, me and the crew. And then we're going to go ahead and initiate the first fight, which I'm going to try to give myself the best chance possible with this one. And that's going to be... Because then later on I can use this to kill that one. So I'm going to use this. This is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, four. So seven versus four. And it looks like I win, 7, so 10 versus 8. So I end up winning that fight, and the Guardian is gone. Oof, that was a lot of planning just for one little small Guardian. Let me tell you, the thing was Galaxy. <laughs> Bad jokes. All right, okay, cool. Now that we're done with that, we got a roll that wasn't too terrible. Uh, I would have rather have done some other stuff, but I'm going to hold on to this card. I'm not going to play it, because I can't really do much else besides move if I really wanted to. And now I'm going to draw... Oh. First things first, we're going to do the roll. So we have to roll this die. It's going to be yellow. It's going to get uh, one here, one here, one here. Which is not the greatest, but it's not the worst. And then this ability is going to, uh, during your end turn step, lower the sparks <clears throat> on your home server by one towards the lowest number partition. So I go from three to two. Oh, perfect. Hey, look, it came to me. And then uh, spawn one in my home. All right. Okay. So that's, that's not ideal, but all right, it happened. And now we do our next five. One, two, three, four, five. A bunch of greens. Night on ship. 
And then we get this. Now, uh, just to clarify, the goal of this game is for me to survive. Um, I think I'm definitely going to survive. Like, I don't think I'm going to get overrun and lose. Um, but also, I want to get the best score I can. So I'm, I'm right now I'm just kind of basically playing for score. But I don't think I'm going to get overrun in this current board state. Like, this board state seems impossible for me to get overrun. Um, although, if I roll really badly, maybe. <laughs> maybe I'll jinx it. Man, man, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <clears throat> Alright, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six cards because I kept that one from last round. And let's see. So I'm not able to have multiple of the same type of installation on the same card. So that's out of the question. I can go and spin this to make this a yellow. So I, oh, let me see. Is there more efficient? Yeah, I'll do that. Well, let me see what's up here. We got a duality, which is a flip one contaminant on your partition to the other side. We got Dancing Pig, which is, um, I get to have one contaminant on my server swap positions with a spark on your server. Oh, it's actually not bad. Uh, this one allows me to redo the spark roll. Uh, I'll spin this. This is a good card, but I'm, I don't need it right now. Um, and I'll get Dancing Pig instead. So I spent that as a one yellow, got that. And I'm going to use this uh, dancing pig right now to swap this with this. And now I'm going to go ahead and try to fight that because it's going to be a pretty much straight up fight. Oh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to play this card to flip this. Uh, sorry, to kill this and make it a yellow. So my fight's a little bit easier. And then I'm going to do the fight. So now to do the fight, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, sorry. Four, five, six. So six to one. Uh, possible I can lose. That is not the way I lose. Okay, cool. We're good. So that's going to be two versus my nine. So this one's super gone. Oh, no. And... That's fine. Now I got to figure out what to do with the rest of the stuff. I have night on sh uh, night on ship, which is actually not awful. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, I am going to hmm. So the thought process I had initially was to make a green, so I can have it down here, and then I can start shifting stuff around. But I think it might be a better idea, now I'm thinking about it, to move over to here with these two and then just kind of spend my time fighting over there in the last round. And then hope that I can um, somehow manage to make it back over there. <laughs> because I, I really do need to clear the five and six over there and that's uh, that's a little bit of a nightmare. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think it's kind of the best plan I have. Um, I might lose this scenario because of the five and the six over there. I don't really have a clean way to get over there. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and try. So let's see. Let's do not in ship to move myself and these over to here. Uh, we'll go here first, and then uh, I'm gonna spend. I think, is, is it three symbols or is it three cards? <sighs> Let's see, checking the rule book in and see if I can spin three symbols to be any one symbol. I want to say is any three symbols can be any one symbol. So command, each card has command that shows a type. Uh, you can discard one or more command cards to generate enough command for proper action. Uh, events some events cards have text to say execute and explain the ability uh, it doesn't say hmm. I just kind of wish I just mentioned there's a glossary of terms going on over here Not seeing anything. 
Uh, anything in here? Oh, I found it. Nope, I didn't find it. I was like, ha ah, I found another rule book after all this time. It's like, nope, nope, I have not found another book. See, we talk about every resource except for purple. <clears throat> that's the part that's kind of bothering me here. Alright, so we got the action step. So you play command cards to do things. Um, each action requires a certain quantity type of command points for every uh, to perform. Uh, every action requires that you play at least one command uh, card. As explained later in the rules, what defines your effectiveness as a renegade or as a renegade is how cleverly you plan and combine your cards. Um, perspective. The result of your last action occurs from the perspective of your avatar. Action limits. During your phase, you can play cards from your hand uh, face up onto the table to generate the sufficient command points to take the action, take a single action. As you're taking that action, place the playing cards in your discard. Um, as long as you have cards in your hand and sufficient command points, you can continue. By passing during either two rounds, you can hold onto a sixth card. Command inef inefficiency. All command points generate generated by the card go towards that one card. Command completion. Once your action is complete and it's command cards discarded, you cannot undo the action. Sure. Uh, oh, oh, wild card. Uh, you may discard any three command cards. Oh. Here it is. You may discard any three command cards to generate one purple. Wow, that's expensive. It's nasty expensive. Well, there goes the answer to my question. So it's not three symbols, it's three cards. Welp, I guess I'm uh I guess I'm pushing some stuff around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use this to push some things around. Let's see, what is this? This is shifting on my home server, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna use these four. Uh, so I'm gonna do one push two push and three push like so so that way um i have things consolidated and go in there and start fighting uh, now if for some reason there's a a, a, a thing added here is going to be really bad but there's no reason for it to be out of there because this card is adding based on the spot with nothing that has the least number which is all these other spaces and then this one is only adding i was only rotating stuff on my server my home server so that's all fine. <clears throat> all right. Uh, now we move on to the next one, which is figuring out where these things will spawn. Oh. My home server. So my home server will have three, which is not great because we're getting four this turn. So this is one, two. I'm glad I killed that guardian though. Three, four. So now I've definitely got to go back to my home server. Now we're going to do one here. Oh, we're going to shift these first. So it says we're going to shift towards the lower number. So we start with the lowest number. And it's going to spawn there. All right. So I really need to get rid of that. Uh, at least at least five is okay for now. But um, it's more crisis for me to deal with, y'all. One, two, three, four, five. All righty. Uh huh. How am I gonna manage this? So I need to clear that, and this, and that. Oh, we got a new car in the market. It's gonna be emit EMP. What? Now you show up. Uh, so emit e EMP is as when I win a fight in one spot, I get to delete all sparks in another spot. So that's a great card to have right now. Cause if I just have two walk, which I do. Then I can actually get over there. I just need a little bit more than just two walk. Um, so I'm gonna. Oh, I don't have enough reds. Ah, uh, no. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use my black market card to buy this because I definitely need that. <clears throat> I'm not. I don't know if I use uh, exotic software to actually do anything because I don't know if I have enough action points to do that. But I'm gonna play this <clears throat> to move. It says or execute to place this card. Oh no, where do that? Yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna move um, one. I'm going to take all these with me, too, because it's a much easier fight. And you know what? Alternatively, I 
Yeah, I need to do that in different order. I don't have enough move for this, do I? Shoot. I mean, I'm still gonna lose this objective, so I guess it doesn't matter if I clear out this and those, but I just don't want any guardians to be forming. So, <clears throat> the idea, <coughs> excuse me, the idea here is that I was gonna be able to fight this, kill those two by winning this fight, and then after I win that fight, then move over here to fight those directly, and then uh, walk over there to possibly clear out those two if I have enough cards, which I don't. So, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I could possibly lose if I roll a one and they get a six. It's a little bit low on the chances. But, oh, I, I'm using the wrong card. Sorry, I need to play this one. Um, so this is so it's impossible for me to lose now. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's impossible for me to lose this fight. This one dies, and I'll let these ones go away. Oh no! What just happened? Is there two here? Wait. Oh, no, I dropped one. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, because I took out three. I took out the one that was here and the two that were there because of this card, which allows me to delete all sparks uh, from one partition adjacent to me. And then now um, I can move into here and then fight those two. Which, uh, in hindsight, I probably should delete those. No, I'm going to stay over here. Well, it, it doesn't matter, does it? Um, I'd, I'd rather not lose a fight here, and I'm okay with losing a fight over there, and no matter what I do, I'm not going to be able to clear six anyway, or clear the purple anyway. So, I want to have these ones be the one cleared, so I can at least have my, my important stuff freed up. So I killed this one, took out those two, and then I'm going to go back and fight these two. <clears throat> but I could do an exotic software. And, oh yeah, you know what, I'll do that just because I can. I'm going to do an exotic software, I'm going to convert this and this into a green and then I'm going to use these two cards to push these over here one two and then I'm going to start a fight which is going to be one two three four five so five versus two it doesn't matter it doesn't, really doesn't matter what this role is honestly but um, yep that's a victory for me a loss for the um, computer so these will die so I mean like I said it's inconsequential it doesn't matter uh, and that's it. So now we do our final spawns, which is this one's going to uh, do its stupid thing of rolling the dice. So yellow, we're going to get one, two, three. So one, two, three. So good timing on that. And then um, let me make sure I'm reading this one. During your intern step, uh, lower sparks one on your home server towards the lowest number partition without any uh, squares or other circles jump over higher number partitions with a guardian uh, in place or stay in place when progress is blocked finally block one spark or add one spark to your access point yeah i feel like that's impossible then no no it's, it's only um four and five okay yeah it's possible so it's gonna be one two three and we're going to spawn one here like so all right and if i had cleaned up that earlier then um i would win this one but I actually lose this one so i fail and now we're on the fail side so success for this one is add one spark to the access points of every server that has no replicator what oh okay and uh, the fail for this one is uh, add one spark to all access point to, to all access points of every server that has no replicator. Then add one spark to every partition four and five that has a spark or guardian on it. So sorry, so you guys should see the card. It's a uh, so we're on the fail side because we failed. Add one spark to each. Uh, oh, sorry, keep bumping camera. Add one spark to to all the access points. Uh, every server that has no replicator and then add one spark to every partition four and five that has a spark on it or a spark or guardian on it so it says add one spark do i i guess i gotta use the partition die for this one it doesn't specify but i'm assuming i need to use a partition die and then once again we're gonna ignore these movement things because spider says to ignore them so i will ignore them because spider says so 
Uh, so we're gonna add one spark to oh to all access points. I see. So oh that's that's not good. Oh oh sorry. Well before we do that, um, there's gonna be fights happening. Um, this is gonna fight. Uh, I win the fight, so he dies. This is gonna fight twice potentially. Uh, then we win the fight. Cool. Oh wait no, that's not true. We lose a fight. That's a six and a five. We fight again. Wait, six and five is uh, seven and seven. Yeah, we lost because we have to beat it. And then we super lose again. And then these are gonna fight. So this one versus those two. Uh, we win. Wow, nice. Oh, I'll use the wrong spot. And then another fight's gonna happen. We win again. Wow. <laughs> That virus is kicking butt, y'all. And then uh, this is gonna kill this. And I don't think this kills that. Let me see, does it delete guardians? Or does it delete installations? I hope it doesn't, because that'll be kind of sucky if one little small circle can delete a whole installation. Let's see. So this is in the uh, Sparks fight of uh, viruses battle. And then delete all containments remaining, sorry, do, uh, remaining sparks and guardians tokens on the network automatically delete all contaminant tokens in the space. Delete installation segments uh, for guardians. So if there's a guardian in the same spot as an installation, then the square is gone. But the square survives, thank goodness. Uh, these are fine. This one's fine. These are all okay. Uh, is it my fully surrounded? Looks like nobody's fully surrounded yet. This one's close. This one was almost there actually. If we get one and one here. All right, cool. Now that we've done that, now we add all this stuff. So add one spark to the access point of every server that has a replicator, which is here, which is, so it has no yellow square, which none of them have a yellow square. And then um, add one spark to every four and five. So this is basically just lowering my score overall, really. So it's four, where's five? Oh, that's five. Uh-oh, I actually might lose. Oh no, I think I lost y'all, because I've run out of sparks. I'm one spark short. Are you kidding me? No. Oh, what? Uh, oh no, there's one more. Whew. Whew. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Whew. That, was, that was very close. So I have not lost the game, but boy was I close to losing that game. Um, that, that, that fight that happened here was clutch, <laughs> because... Anytime you need to place a spark and there's no more sparks left, you lose the game immediately. And I had exactly enough sparks. So there's 25 sparks on this board. Let's, let's, wow. Uh, did I get everything? This is the four and five, four and five, and then four and five, and then four and five, and oh no, I didn't do four and five. Okay, so I lost. All right, okay. Never mind. I lost. <laughs> All right, I did lose. I didn't add it to my, um, to my home server. All right, so I lost by negative two. Taken over by the sparks. Taken over by the sparks. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me see if there's any more in here. So it should be 25. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24. Yeah, 25. <sighs> that's, depre that's depressing. That's depressing. All because of one dice roll. It really came back to that one dice roll that happened uh, when I lost this particular section. Because this will put all, all these particular... Um, well, it really only put out one guardian and I took care of the guardian so I guess it put stuff back in so in hindsight if I had let it, if I let the guardian form here then that might have actually been better no 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 it wouldn't have been better because then there would be a explosion which the explosion is worse because you put out way more stuff uh, if one of those would have formed a guardian out of one because uh, if, if one of these form a guardian they convert immediately and then I get to have two more back into the bag or three more back into the bag so in hindsight, uh, the game's over because I didn't take care of that over there, which means it will spawn instead of, instead of spawning 15, I would have spawned six. No, did I do math right? No, I didn't. Yeah, I would have done six instead of doing uh, three times one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 15. Because I would have done one, two, three, four, five. Oh, five. Sorry, I did math wrong. I would have, I would have spawned five instead of 15. 
So because I had to spawn 15 instead of 5, because I couldn't clear the 5 and the 6 over there, uh, that led me to, sorry, the 4 and the 5 over there, that led me to losing this game. So yeah, all right, lots of uh, lots of fancy words, just to basically say this is a interesting deck builder. Uh, it's a game that I I enjoy on occasion. Uh, the wording and like kind of remembering what to do when and where to spawn what, that that's definitely something that uh, definitely leads to um, leads to some unnecessary unnecessary learning curve. And as I said before in the in the kind of overview and everything, it's just like if literally we just reskin this game. And then we simplify the terms. This game becomes much more fun and much more approachable. And the game itself is it's like it's like Pandemic, but more exciting. Like, you know, I, I detest Pandemic as a game, as in I don't enjoy it. Um, I will play it, but I, I'm not going to have the most fun time in the world. Like, instead of playing Pandemic, I'd rather play Pax Emancipation, which is basically Pandemic with more steps, too. But those games are fun because it's kind of telling a story and kind of, or that, that game specific is telling a story and you kind of see your dice roll and you get to learn a little bit about history. With this game, the only thing it has going for it is just that it's hard to find. Um, <laughs> I guess that's the primary thing it has going for it, it's hard to find. Uh, the the variety in the game is is there and each person plays differently for sure. Uh, so I don't want to knock on the variety like as in saying, there's no variety here, this is all the same game. But... I do feel that that entry curve, that entry learning curve for what you get, you know, what you're doing versus what you get is very much on the same level as Pax Emancipation. Like, I feel like sometimes when I play Pax Emancipation, it's like, why can't I, why, 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 why shouldn't I just put Pandemic on the table and play it? Um, whereas with this, it's like, you know, I've done all this card building, I've done all these things to change stuff together, and then it comes down to a dice roll, and it's like, ah, all right, I guess I lost the dice roll. You know, it's like, yeah, dice, dice are, dice are fine, but there's not enough. There, there, there happened to not be enough mitigation for me specifically based on what came out over here in the hack shack based on how i played my cards because that definitely affected in uh, affected a lot of things and uh, the game did force me to do a thing that ultimately came to be a really good boon like forcing me to build one of these was actually really good because that meant that i'm in a situation to where now i need to um i need to go and uh use that ability and that ability is really powerful really strong same for that uh, and, and also gave me that which lets me teleport places which is cool but i feel like i feel like the the rewards with air quotes from level two and level three were not all that great either like level level three's reward was spawn five instead of spawn 15 and it's like why why are we doing this like like if if i succeeded i feel like it's just spawn zero um, but it basically just kind of go into the whole the whole thing of like, you know, if you run out, then you lose. It's like, oh, you thought you had it, but you didn't. We pulled the rug from me. It's like, why would you do that? <laughs> why would you pull the rug from me? Now, um, probably how I would try to address some of those problems would be maybe, uh, as I mentioned before, maybe make it to where you can actually see all of the goals coming up. Um, I understand that that's going to kind of dry up the challenge and the mystery a little bit. But in a game to where you're dealing with dice and you're dealing with random, having to kind of turn on a dime to immediately start reacting to something that you should have been planning for maybe four or five turns ago uh, is a big deal, especially since you only play, what, nine rounds? So you so you only play nine hands. And after nine hands, you have to achieve all these things, and it's like, yeah, you can do it. It's possible with the cards that you get. And that, that's kind of like one of the things I like about it. It's like it's small and compact, and like you have all these things. But anyway, I'm just rehashing some stuff we already talked about. Anyway, so we see this game. This is the game. I have 25 points. I have lost, actually I have 23 points, if you want to count the points total, because I have negative two, because I had uh, two sparks I should have placed. And uh, yeah, just let me know what y'all think about the game. Uh, let me know if you think it should be reprinted. Um, I feel like this game is worthy of reprint. If we simplify the wording and just kind of rip out some of the cool jargon that you have and just put in normal words. And once you put in the normal words like move or, you know, push or things like add square, uh, if we simplify the words, then we are not necessarily losing too much of the theme because because there, there's a billion games out there that have a billion board games specifically that have all these cool elaborate themes and the wording is so simple that you could have just you know taped on any theme that you wanted to and I feel like this game was trying to, its hardest to avoid that but it fell short uh, fell short in the sense that it, it came it, it became overly complicated um, anyway like I said basically just rehashing stuff we already talked about but. Just in case you didn't watch that video of me commenta commenting and talking about the game, reviewing the game, this is that little bit there. So, hope you all enjoyed the experience. Um, I, I had fun. That was enjoyable. Um, frustrating, but enjoyable. 
and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and move on from there. So thank you all for watching. Uh, hope you all enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you all whenever.